Up until at least the late 1960s, the standard meter for basic electrical measurements was the vacuum tube voltmeter, or VTVM. Most could measure AC and DC voltage as well as resistance over several ranges and display the result on a large analog meter. They featured a high input impedance which avoided loading down the circuit under test. Manufacturers included such companies as B&K, Heathkit, Hickok, Keithley, RCA, and Simpson. While not as accurate, fully featured, or portable as a modern digital multimeter, or DMM, a VTVM is still useful and perfectly adequate for most basic measurements such as those done when restoring old tube radios or other vintage electronics. It can be fun to troubleshoot an old radio using test equipment from the same era. An analog meter is also helpful when there's a need to adjust for a peak or a null, something that's difficult with a digital display. One frustration with most VTVMs is that they require a battery for the ohms function, typically a single 1.5 volt C or D cell. Replacing the battery usually requires opening up the unit, but of more concern, these batteries often leak when left in the meter for long periods of time, which can damage the inside circuitry. In this video, I'll look at several approaches that have been used to avoid the need for a battery in a VTVM. One approach is to use the 6.3 volt AC transformer winding for the tube filaments, half wave rectify and filter it, and provide some form of regulation to produce 1.5 volts DC. A simple circuit to do that is shown here. This particular circuit has been reported as one that the Heathkit company officially sanctioned, although I've not been able to find any references to it in technical notes or other official Heathkit documents. It uses a diode, capacitor, and resistor to rectify and filter the AC and the voltage drop across two more diodes to provide some regulation of the output to around 1.5 volts. The diodes are not critical and can be any 1 in 4000 series or similar silicon rectifier diodes. The capacitor value is also not critical and a higher value could be used. The resistor will typically only be dissipating about a quarter watt, so one with a smaller power rating could be used, but it's good to have some safety factor, especially as there's little convection cooling in a closed metal case with two tubes operating in it. This circuit should work with any VTVM that has a 6.3 volt AC filament voltage available that has one side grounded and where the negative battery connection is grounded. Take care not to reverse the wiring and short the filament voltage to ground as it could destroy the power transformer. I tried the circuit on two Heathkit V7 and IM18 VTVMs and found that it worked well. The limited voltage regulation is not a big issue as you need to initially adjust the zero and full scale meter values from the VTVM front panel controls whenever you make resistance readings. There was significant ripple on the DC output with the leads shorted when on the lowest ohms range, but since the meter responds to the average value, it wasn't noticeable. This circuit could be installed internally in most VTVMs by adding a 5 lug or similar terminal strip and finding a suitable place on the chassis to mount it. A second and more sophisticated circuit is shown here. Variations of this can be found on the internet. It uses an LM317 voltage regulator IC to regulate the voltage. Some variations of the circuit omit the two additional protection diodes D5 and D6, and some use a trim pot to allow accurately adjusting the output voltage. While more complex than the earlier circuit, this one provides better filtering and regulation and takes less current drain when not using the ohms function. I didn't yet build this circuit, but I have ordered some LM317 regulator ICs so I can try it out. This circuit's probably best built on a printed circuit board or a piece of perf board and mounted inside. A third approach for a battery eliminator is to use a fully independent power supply module to provide the 1.5 volts DC. This could be done with a small switching or analog power supply or wall wart. This has the advantage that it wouldn't add any additional load on the filament supply and should be easier to apply without modifying the instrument. The downside is that it likely won't fit inside most VTVMs and so it would need to be external requiring another connection to the AC power line. With some VTMs such as those made by Heathkit, a concern with the circuits that use the filament winding is that the increased current draw especially on the lowest ohms range with the leads shorted, pushes the limits of the filament winding of the transformer, which could potentially cause this difficult to find component to fail. A suggested solution is to remove the pilot lamp or replace it with a modern LED equivalent. The reduced current drain with an LED should more than compensate for the current drawn by the battery eliminator circuit. If your VTVM uses a number 44 or number 47 pilot lamp with a bayonet socket, 
There are direct LED replacements that can be purchased. They're often used in old radios and pinball machines. My two Heathkit VTVMs, a V7 and an IM18, use number 50 bulbs with a screw base. LED replacements for number 50 bulbs are hard to find and expensive. You can wire an LED in yourself. Use a current limiting resistor as well as a diode as the 6.3 volts AC may exceed the peak inverse voltage of the LED, which can be as low as 5 volts, and damage it. A suitable circuit is shown here. On my Heathkit VTVMs, I removed the old bulb and socket and soldered in a red LED with a 1K resistor and a 1 in 4007 diode. This provides a red power indication, similar to the original which used the white number 50 bulb behind some red plastic film. For my two Heathkit VTVMs, I tried a variation of the LM317 regulator approach. I ordered a low-cost DC to DC regulator module which uses an LM317 regulator IC and provides a trim pot to adjust the output voltage. An external diode and 1000 microfarad capacitor are added to rectify and filter the 6.3 volt AC filament voltage. I use the circuit shown here. Note that you can't use a full wave rectifier in circuits like most heath kits where one side of the battery and filament transformer is grounded. You have to use a half wave circuit with one diode. I bought two of these modules from a seller here in Canada, so shipping time and cost was reasonable. The modules were about $2.50 each plus shipping. They're also available cheaper from Chinese sellers, but with longer shipping times. I mounted the modules using double-sided tape to an open space on the PCB. The diode and capacitor connect to the module, and it's wired to the 6.3 volts AC from the pilot lamp and the battery positive connection of the range switch. This allows the modification to be reversed since no holes needed to be drilled. I adjusted the output of the regulator to 1.55 volts DC. This worked well on the V7 and IM18 vacuum tube voltmeters. There was no discernible ripple on the DC and no sag in voltage between open and shorted test leads even on the lowest ohms range. The current draw with the lead shorted on the lowest DC ohms range was about 150 milliamps, less than the current drawn by the original pilot lamp. I would suggest marking the unit with tape or a sticker to indicate that it was modified to not need a battery, as I did. As with old radios, it's a personal decision whether to keep the unit original or make modifications such as these. In the case of my two Heathkit VTVMs, I decided to modify them but in such a way that the changes could still be reversed in future if desired.